So I've been in the research and development um, area for many years. I started doing it actually in my undergraduate. It was about my, it was about 2000, the, the year 2000, I started going into research and development with my first co-op term, I worked in a, um, you know, first of all, I worked in a pulp and paper plant um, in research and development in the science lab. And then I went and worked in a manufacturing plant that was manufacturing plastic stuff for cars. And I did research and development and engineering in that area. Then I did uh, research in development and create, um, I created software simulations for chemical processing and chemical plants. In, uh, in Calgary, Alberta, actually, it was really cool. And then I, I worked in, um, you know, I, I worked in a chemical simulation or wind simulation um, consulting firm. Uh, RWDI, it still exists, go check it out, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, and then a whole bunch of research and development in academia as well. They're doing research in, in academia and sort of I've, I've been doing this for a long time. So I want to talk about the sort of career path and it's very, very creative in terms of what you ha actually have to do. We have this sort of imaginary view. A lot of us have this imaginary view that it's very structured and very boring and there's really nothing to it. But um, it, it is a very creative career. In fact, and I would say it's much more like it's closer to the feel of being an artist um, than being something like a structural engineer with some boring stuff going on, you know, that kind of thing. It really is, um, you know, an exciting kind of fun career because you're creating and building and solving things all the time, whether you are in engineering or you're in research and development. You're building things, you're doing things, you're trying to put things together, you're, you are um, at, you're trying to solve problems. You could be in management too in that career path and try to solve problems. But what you're trying to do is constantly find solutions to problems. Science and stuff in engineering and research it's broken. Everything is always broken. And you have to come in and you have to firefight and solve that particular problem, right? You have to put out that fire is what we call firefighting. You're just coming in and trying to solve that particular thing. There's always something broken and always some sort of problem. And you have to come in and solve that thing. It's the same in um, management, same in, 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 you know, entrepreneurship, same in all sorts of areas. It's very much a problem solving thing where you are solving these interesting scientifically related problems and trying to diagnose how to actually do that. And we get stuck often on these problems, but then you have to figure out a way, how do you get around it, right? Um, so another thing is that the scientific career, and, and I didn't realize this so much, it's, actually it's funny, in industry it feels a lot less competitive, but in academia, the scientific research and development career feels extremely competitive. You're always feeling like you're competing against other people. And, and if you're in the, the, the area, you'll know exactly what I know, what, you know, you, you, you know, you feel it, right? That there is this competition. You're always being sort of weighted against other people and compared and why aren't you doing, you know, these kind of publications? Why are you doing that? And there's all sorts of competition that goes on and questioning that goes on. And, um, you know, you have to sort of get above that in that competition aspect of it. I don't like, um, I'm, I'm going to be straight up and I don't think a lot of people like it, but some people thrive in that area and that sort of nature of it. But some, a, a lot of us, including myself, actually don't do well in that sort of competitive um, aspect of, of things. And, and, and I feel like I, you know, without building up the sort of wall, of you know being myself and trying to be open and you know authentic and stuff like that um i would and you know i was getting eaten eaten up and i felt very you know alone and things like that what you feel with sort of this competitive nature but you know as you learn to deal with it you actually um you know i don't enjoy it but you know you learn to tolerate it in, in a lot of different ways so another thing is that a research career um, is is oddly anonymous with what you do. So science is kind of weird. It's kind of got this balance between there are superstar scientists, there's lots of them, but at the same time, you kind of get grouped in, your efforts get grouped in with the institution. You see, 
you know, it's weird. News does this all the time. They News reporters kind of falsely report scientific um, information and they sort of group it as like, you know, so-and-so university did this. So-and-so research institution did this. No, it wasn't them. It was the researchers themselves that were actually doing those particular things. You know, it is a group effort and there is you know, definitely a research institution and university actually does get a lot of credit for the scientific efforts because they do a lot of the background work and heavy lifting of getting people to go to their institution and picking people and stuff like that. But there is a lot of work that goes on for the individual scientists. And often this happens at multiple sort of levels of analysis. The institution gets credit for it. Um, sometimes if you're in a large lab, the lead PI gets credit for what you did and you might be a junior scientist and you're like, I did all the work, but somebody else gets the credit for it. So it's kind of a weird, um, the credit system is a little weird in um, research careers that they have to sort of sort out a little bit better. I don't know how to do this. That's why there is, you know, the, the legal system is huge in science because of that. Um, if you think of the, the patenting system, is entirely all about that, um, about how to get credit for credit is due, and we still haven't figured it out. I don't think that there's a great system at this moment in terms of figuring this out. Um, you know, the last thing is is that the scientific career is all about the research career, um, and I'm kind of grouping those together because I think they kind of go in between. You know, they kind of build on top of each other. I don't think that there's a real good uh, demarciation, right? A real separation, great separation between the two because they do flow between science and research kind of flow between each other. But, um, you know, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot about cr finding a problem that you like in solving that particular problem, right? So if you work in a big chemical plant, which, you know, I sort of have experience in as well, um, there's problems everywhere. It's always broken. There's something that doesn't work everywhere and you have to prioritize and think about what you should go, what should be the thing that you should solve. Now there's tools to help you solve that in a methodical way. If you look at, um, you know, to total quality management and, you know, standard uh, quality control standards and things like that, they tell you what you should fix. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a choice. You can choose one or the other and, and, and sort of prioritize one thing based on, you know, the scientific methods or showed this problem, but it might not be the problem that you like to solve at this moment. So you don't choose that. Um, in software development, we have sort of bug lists where there's, you know, thousands of bugs in most software programs and you pick the best one. Uh, you go through and prioritize those different things depending on need and stuff like that. People actually, there's real jobs about picking the jo uh, the bugs that you should fix. And so in science, it's the same thing. You sort of pick the problem that you want to solve and you pursue that particular problem. And you might get not as much say in terms of you know picking that problem, but you're still doing that particular sort of picking and choosing and finding the thing that you like to, to do in terms of what you think is the most important problem to choose. So with that, I think, you know, research and development career is, uh, is pretty fun. Uh, there is a lot of aspects to it that's pretty cool. There's lots of problems with it as well. I'm not going to be, you know, if you watch the other videos on this channel, you get to sort of a sense of, of all these kind of things. Um, but, you know, you might like it and you might not like it. It depends on who you are as an individual. So uh, watch some of the videos and, and you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about So on, the, on this channel. So anyways, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Take care and uh, have a wonderful day. Bye.